as he came in, they hit me so hard, I died. Bam, I was gone. I left this bone suit, and I was on the other side. Mark Farner died and remembers what he saw. It's an incredible story. I spoke with the Grand Funk legend recently about his new album, out November 9th, called Closer to My Home. It's his first new album since 2006, his first new album since his brush with death. I'm Paul Stevenson, this is VRP Rocks, and this is Mark Farner reliving that incredible post-life experience and how it's transformed him ever since. Well, the brush with death was on October 23rd, I was in Detroit. Uh, we stayed at the Renaissance, my wife and I. We were down doing some PR. And my wife uh, got up in the morning. She was, you know, in the bathroom. She told me about it as, uh, you know, later. She said, I walked out of the bathroom. She said, your left arm shot up in the air. And your left leg shot up in the air. And you rolled out. I'm, I'm thinking, I don't remember any of this, you know. I remember coming to the paramedics are around me, and here they got this oxygen mask on my face, and they're pouring the oxygen to me. They get me in the ambulance, and I go over to Harper in Detroit. Um, they had me on an external pacemaker. They, I think they had kind of summarized what they thought was wrong and they 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 were monitoring me they had this big screen and three doctors are standing in front of the screen and all of a sudden i get i get hit with it it, it felt like they plugged me into the wall and um i holler out oh you know it's like crazy pain and my wife come over what's the matter mark and, and it's like they hit me again and, and this this pain was coming like from the middle of my back and it and it just bent me backwards and I was in this shaking fit. It was uh it was like a uh, uh, seizure brought on by the electrical current and and she's yelling to the top of her lungs to these doctors, "Hey, you're killing him." She says, "Stop." And this doctor comes in from the hallway, "What's going on in here?" And it's like um, you know, as, as he came in, they hit me so hard. It's like I died. Bam. I was gone. I left this bone suit and I was on the other side. I was happy. I was set free. I was debt free. And, and that, that relief that I experienced, uh, I can only tell you that it is a great experience. The, you can't kill energy. The, the energy that makes us who we are, our spirit is eternal. And when it goes to the other side, oh my God, it was like going home. It was like a homecoming. It was, it was like, you know, I'm back with mom and dad. It's, it was so wonderful, the experience. And I knew all things. I knew everything. I even had the reason for the earth years, why we had to do time on earth. I knew that over there, but I couldn't bring it back with me. It's some of the information is meant for over there and you can't you can't hold on to it here i don't know why but i do know it, that it would probably smoke most people's brains a poof little cloud of smoke <laughs> but uh on, on my second re-entry i died twice on my second re-entry <clears throat> into my bone suit i call it a bone suit <laughs> this thing I was shown that debt consciousness, D-E-B-T, that's the dirtiest, filthiest, most obscene word uh, known to man. Debt consciousness is the plague of mankind. We are moved by that dirty little word. 
we are harnessed, we are bridled, we are brought under submission by that dirty little word. And those who control the debt are some evil, evil beings. Not just financial debt. That is part of it for sure. But the debt of unfulfilled expectations of other people upon us. You can th let your mind go on that. And there are, I mean, there's all forms of debt that, that somehow you can just write down to the four letter <laughs> word and the regret that we have within ourselves, we hold ourselves responsible for things that we that we wish we wouldn't have done. We cringe. It's so bad. Oh man, why did I do that? Or you know, we were in a state of mind or state of being that we just regret, and uh, that is weight, and it's all compressed and in every little instance every little time that we get in that situation where we have to endure some more debt we can we'll forget about it you know after a while but but it's there it's accumulating so here's where it starts and then the, the more debt the more debt the more debt the more debt it's just pushing us down and it weight wait, wait, it's lead and it's pulling us down. And we are the only ones who can set ourselves free from it. It is the realization of what it is and its purpose. And I wish everybody could realize the purpose of debt. It's evil. It's evil. But love is the opposite of debt. And because you love yourself, you should love yourself enough to set yourself free and never compromise yourself again. And not that I am perfect, Brother Paul, but when I get up in the morning, when I wake up, I put on the full armor of God and I say, Lord, show me where the debt is. I'm I'm open to it. I want to see where it is because in, in our memory, We've had these things occur that put us in this debt consciousness. And when we realize what it is, where it is, and uh, and we instantly go, oh, thank you. It's like it's taken bolt cutters to that anchor that has been a chain holding us down. We set ourselves free. And especially with regret, personally, I can speak from this position to set yourself free, you know, you got to let yourself off the hook. It's, it's, that's the most difficult. It's easier to set other people free than it is sometimes to set ourselves free, but it needs to be done. And we are the only ones that can do it personally, brother. Wow. So profound. And so, so inspiring words as well. Thank you, Mark. That was incredible. In terms of, 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 of the, the, the hospitalization then i mean what what, what was it the in the end that that, that caused the, the your issues and and how long were you you dead for do you know uh it, it was just a matter of just a few minutes i mean it was it wasn't uh enough to you know uh i didn't go long enough to uh see a light or i mean i've heard stories of other people say mm -hmm. oh they saw the light i didn't see any light I didn't see any light. I just felt the love and the release, the, the relief that you get when all of that is gone. And that's why I, I, and I still have just a little tangible memory of that experience of being debt free and, and not because you got your bills paid, uh, <laughs> because you got your life insurance paid. You know, Jesus set me free. <laughs> That's that. And I, I am a cousin Christian. I mean, we are definitely uh, myself and Mark Slaughter. We we are 
we are the same in, with that regard. People have turned it into, it's kind of like a superstition. And you remember, Stevie Wonder told us about superstition, brother. <laughs> he certainly did. He certainly <laughs> did. 